In this video, we're going to be creating another selector to get our header component to update correctly. Usually, we have a shopping cart off to the right when the user is logged in. And we also get a drop down for the admin when the user is logged in as the admin. And both of them are not updating correctly. What we'll do is we'll create a selector, select the information we'll need for this header component, and then our header component should update correctly by the end of the video. Down at the bottom here, we are currently at video 26. And all the code I'm creating in this video, you'll find at this snippets link. What we're doing in this video is very similar to what we did at video 23. We created a selector and then we updated the template. If you haven't seen that, I highly recommend you check that out as well. Let's review our header component. The header component is located inside of the shared folder and we'll open up the HTML file and the TS file. And we'll review the TS file first. Here we're getting the user from the auth service and we're going to change this all up. We're going to get the information now from our store using a selector so, so we won't need this. And we'll remove the auth service soon when we bring in our store. And also instead of returning an entire user object, we'll only return the information we need for this template. If we review the HTML, the only two things we'll need is to know is if the user is admin or not. And that shows this drop down here. And then also we need to know if the user is logged in. How I was checking if the user is logged in, I checked to see if the user had an ID. If the user had an ID, I logged them in. We'll be doing this a little different, but we need two properties. So we'll create an interface for that within our new selector. Our new interface is going to look something like this. We'll have a property called isAdmin, and that'd be a Boolean. And then the second one is going to be like is logged in or something like that. And that would be a Boolean as well. So our interface is going to look something like this. I'll remove this. Let's generate our new selector file. I'll open up the command line. And then I already have it in memory. I'll hit up and up. And we're going to generate a new selector. We're going to put our new selector file within our global selectors folder. And I'm going to call it header. Also, we'll skip the test. Hit enter. And let's review our new file. I'll open that up inside of our global store, inside of our selectors folder. And here's our brand new file. Open this up. And let's add our interface first thing. And every time our new selector gets called, we'll be returning this object to our header view model. And now we're ready to create our selector. Now I'll add that right here. And this is very similar to what we did inside the auth selector in video 23. If we go back inside of the selectors folder, open up the auth selector. And what we'll be doing is something very similar to this. So we can copy and paste this into our header selector. But before we do that, let's refactor this just a little bit. Like right here, we're passing in the entire feature. And we don't really need to do that. We could create a selector that will get our admin for us and pass that selector in here instead of the entire feature. Let's go ahead and do that. And it's going to be very similar to this. I'll copy this, add this right below here. But instead of returning the is logged in, we're going to call it is admin. And then all we need to do is change this instead of ID, it's going to be the property inside the user called is admin. And what's useful about this is we can reuse this selector anywhere we want as well as this. Now let's refactor this selector and just pass in our new is admin, copy this, pass that as the first parameter, replace that. And we need to change this. So this is going to be passing in a Boolean now. I'll call it is admin. And that will be a type of Boolean. And we could just copy this now and replace this. And save it so it formats it for me. Now that we refactored our auth selector, we could copy this and paste this inside of our header selector. Jump over here. And then we just need to change around this to our new header view model. I'll copy this, replace this here. Rename our selector. I'll call this uh, header or header. And we can reuse the select is admin from our auth selector file and as well as this one too. Let's save this. And now that we created our header view model selector, let's use this within the TS file. In the TS file, the first thing we'll do is bring in our selector at the top. 
Whenever we want access to anything within our header selectors, we'll just call on this. The next thing we want to do is replace this user with our new view model. And I'll just call it VM for short. So VM, and then I'll add the dollar sign because this is going to be an observable. So observable, and the type is going to be the view model from within our header selectors. And header view model, that's the one you want. And I'll close it up. The next thing we want to do is bring in our store inside of the constructor. And we can replace this off service. We don't need that anymore. And we'll remove it from the imports in a second. And this will be store from NGRX. And the type is the app state. Now that we set up our store, now we can finally call our selector. And I'll do that right below all this. We'll replace this in a second, but I'll just add it right below it. And we'll make sure we set the new view model variable, VM. And that's going to be to whatever we get back from our selector. And the call of the selector, you use this store, then the pipe. And then we could use the select operator that NGRX gives us. And here we'll pass in the selector from the header selectors. From header selectors. And then the one you're after is the select header view model. And I'll make sure I close it up correctly. And then before we edit the template, let's clean up the TS file. So right here, I'll remove this. And we can get rid of this now. And also, we'll remove the imports up here. We don't need the user or the auth service. So I'll remove all this. And we're done inside the TS file. We can save this. Let's go into the template and update that. The first thing we want to do is add in another directive. And we'll add it within the parent container that's holding both of our properties here. This one and this one here. So this div, I'll pick this right here and add a ng if directive right to this one. And this one we're using that variable we just created and we're automatically subscribing to it using the async and we're setting it to a variable. Now we could use this VM within this container, this VM variable. And the first place we'll use it is right here. And inside the VM variable, we should have a property called is admin and is logged in. And I'm after the is admin one here. And then here we're after the is logged in. And what's very powerful about this, if you have a huge template and you got a lot of data that this template needs, you could just add all that within one little variable and everything your template ever needs will automatically update. Now that we set up our template, let's save this. Now we're ready to test it in the browser. Here in the browser, make sure you refresh the browser and let's log in as admin so we can test the dropdown. And if we log in, and this is working great. Our dropdown is showing up and also our shopping cart showed up. So we're updating our header component using a selector. Now in the next video, let's finish up our auth module by removing some code from our auth service. If we hit control P and open up our auth service, we're no longer going to need this user anymore. And we'll remove this in the next video test the application, make sure we don't need to create any more actions or update the reducer or anything like that. And we'll do that in the next video.